Hey everyone, my name is Alice Bull and we are here for Scrapbook Live. I am so excited to be here for this because I haven't been scrapbooking very much lately. I need a little bit more scrapbooking. We had a members only crop on Wednesday for the Scrap Happy members. And it was so fun to see lots of people contributing. They run a little bit different than this. This one is more of a public event, but I am so excited to be here and actually scrapbooking. I made a card on Wednesday, so it was kind of like getting my feet wet back into crafting after a little bit of a hiatus, I will confess. Um, my most productive time of the year is not summer. So I'd love to know when is your most productive time of year to scrapbook? Uh, is there one? Are you kind of consistent all year, year round? If you are like, congratulations, because that is so not my thing. Winter, fall, it's just like that cozy season. I kind of hunker down into my scrap room and get crafting, but summertime, it's like, I'm out and I'm living life. So Diane says winter, <laughs> Judy. And, oh, she's here from Georgia. See, so we're here from all over. This is so wonderful. Uh, my name is Alice Bull. If you're not familiar with me, I run the Scrap Happy membership at scraphappy.org. And we are a membership for online scrapbookers of all kinds. So whether you are a paper, digi, traditional, traveler's notebook, you like mini books. If you like to get your scrapbook on, then we are home for, for potentially for you. And I see lots of our family members smiling faces in our group here today. Um, I'm going to be scrapbooking live here on camera. And we have a new sponsor for this month. So you're going to want to hang out usually somewhere around the middle of our two hour session. Uh, we do a draw for a free prize. Today, the winner is going to receive a free kit from the scrap room, our new sponsor. So due to the, the world that we are living in right now, I'm not saying the word, <laughs> I'm not saying the word. Oh, look, you have your, so uh, Brielle, would you like to show your kit and show? No, she's like, nope, <laughs> that's okay. Um, we, I'm going to be using a flavors of the month kit, but I'm not going to be using it right now because my shipping hasn't arrived. That's international shipping. It normally shows up to possibly three weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, the flavors of the month kit are amazing. I was so excited. Um, we'd actually had, so here's like the story. Uh, I had a free kit donated for one of our loads prizes. And when I was showing off all the products that come in a flavors of the month kit, I'm like, why don't I have one of these? This is amazing. <laughs> and it was just after um, right at the time when my last sponsor had actually closed her shop. And so it was like, hmm, I wonder. And thankfully, I got a hold of the lovely gals from the scrap room and they were like, yeah, let's get this sorted out. So totally not their fault. The parcel was shipped like seriously the 21st of July. That is three and a half weeks. It should have been here. But um, international tracking, not so good either. I know that it was in LA international shipping point on the 25th, but from there, the tracking kind of disappears. It'll be here probably on Monday because that's how these things work, right? When they don't show up. But I'm going to show you a little video about some of this stuff and how their kits work and just why I am so excited. So we're going to do a little screen share here. And I uh, will show you the video. So this is... Hello and welcome to the Scrap Room. I'm Tina Gill, here to show you the August Flavors of the Month kit. The Flavors of the Month is our bigger kit. It includes four brand new collections each and every month. You'll get cardstock, patterned paper, and embellishments. You're also going to receive four recipe cards, one for each one of the collections. This is a recipe card that's designed by the design team. They'll give you a full color photograph of the finished layout and then cutting and assembly instructions. So you can follow right along with our design team 
or of course you can go off and create whatever you like with your kids. You're also going to receive a sample of gourmet coffee. So you'll have that to brew up and sip on as you create with our kids. This month we have a wide variety of themes starting off with Doodlebug Barbie Cute and this is our of course a barbecue, outdoor picnic, food, just all of the things that you think of about summer food and get-togethers. We have School Rules by Echo Park and Bro & Co from Simple Stories and the Simple Vintage Great Escape which is just a lovely outdoor theme. So we're going to dig in and take a closer look at each one of these collections. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because, oh, she had a box of photos. I thought you had the kid. I'm like, I thought you were like holding it up going, I have the kid. And you're like, no, <laughs> all good. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you a peek at what was in their August kit. So you get four different collection lines with some embellishments that go with it. And I was so excited about that because um, I really love to um, play with different kinds of paper. I don't see all of the paper collections. I know Kathy's like, how cute is that? I know. And such a good variety. And you know, when I'm shopping, let's be real, when I'm shopping for my own stuff to scrapbook with, I tend to go back to certain collections. I'm like, oh, I really love this designer. I really love this person's style. And that's fun. But there is something for me that I really love when I try stuff that's a little bit like nothing out of scrapbooking. Could I play with every collection? You betcha. I totally could. But I think when you try something that's not necessarily like the thing that you would purchase for yourself, then it becomes, um, that's when I've actually found so much magic in my collections, like in my pages that I create. It's like, oh, I didn't know I was going to love this, but I love this. <laughs> so um, that's one of the joys for me about getting a kit where I'm not assembling it. I'm really excited that they have a, um, like such a cool, um, like, the, the designs pages that are ready for you. And like, for me, that's a super fun thing that, oh, what have I pressed here? I pressed a button. There we go. Um, but you can also see um, lots of inspiration on their pages. Um, so they have like the done for you. You can go free will and do your own thing. I do that a lot. Um, I'm not always like the girl that sits there and follows the instructions, but I also love to draw inspiration. So I was gonna show you something else from them and that is their, um, from their blog. So let's take a quick look at that and uh, scrap room blog. So here is the scrap room blog. It's actually available right in the main menu when you go to scrap room. It's scrap-room.com, that's uh, the address. And here, um, is one of the pages. Look how bright and fun that is. That's using that um, barbecue, barbecue collection. And, you know, it shows some of the papers that came in that kit. Um, but here's another example using one of the different collections. And they just have a whole bunch of different examples here so that you can look through and say, oh, if the one from that kit that you ordered isn't quite right, this might just be what you need to kind of kickstart your page and you see kind of how somebody else has used it. The great thing too is a lot of pages sometimes are like when you're looking at promo stuff, um, promotional pages and samples, those pages can be really designery, but they're not always super practical for people that have more pictures to share and want to tell bigger stories or, you know, maybe didn't buy 10 million embellishments of different kinds. <laughs> so I think that um, when they, you have a team like this, that's using this kind of kit that can be really helpful in creating your own uh, pages too. So that's just where we're at uh, for today. I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm going to be using that one design kind of as a, 
as a starting point. We'll see how close my page gets to that. I don't have the supplies yet. I'm so excited that they're going to be coming, but they're not here. And that is sometimes how life works. Um, yeah. So, Ooh, it's, Heather has a scrap rack right behind her. She like turns her chair around and says, oh, all the things. Super fun storage ideas. I love getting a peek to see everybody's uh, rooms and stuff. So let's um, dive into what I am going to do today and where this is going to We'll see where this is going to take me. <laughs> um, I really liked that page, that summer page. It was bright and it was colorful. It's totally, um, I don't have papers that are even remotely like that, but I have other fun things that I wanted to play with today. So we'll dig into this. I have a couple of things that I pulled out. So I'm going to start with pictures of us from camping. And in our RV, our giant RV, this was the one time we actually went and really camped because normally we go to my brother's and we, we RV, we don't really camp, camp, let's just say, but we took my one son and my one nephew with us and we actually drove out to the mountains and camped. So it was good. Very off track, off the, off the beaten path. And this sign in the picture that I'm posed by here, it says, road not recommended for travel, use at your own risk. Like it's literally that kind of place. It's remote. <laughs> we had to download the maps to find the spot. But I think that um, like that sample layout, it had three pictures that were smaller. I printed my pictures not quite four by six. They're a little bit smaller and I will, um, I will just use two pictures instead of three. So already it's like, Hey, that was a good idea, but I do it like this. And I think that when you're using kind of a sketch or an idea, it's good to just make it work for yourself. So yeah, I'm really, um, I'm so excited because there's so many good things happening right now. And we've been, um, working on a lot of activities kind of behind the scenes and now everything is like exploding. Um, August is such a good month. Um, normally summer is nice and everything and I'm busy um, coaching swimming, uh, head coach of swim club. However, this year that didn't happen. Uh, but it gave me a little time to work on other projects and super fun um, things have come out of that. I had time to pull together, um, this amazing Scrap Smarter Experience event that will happen next weekend. I am both excited and a little tiny nervous. Oh, that's funny. I keep trying to brush something off my shirt. It's on my camera. <laughs> it's on my screen. I'm like, what is this thing? <laughs> Turns out that my computer screen had something on it. So, uh, yeah, so the Scrap Smarter Experience, if you haven't heard about this, um, it's just amazing. If you have heard about this, if you're signed up, I hope that you're as excited about it as I am. I've seen sneak peeks of everything, and I've been sharing sneak peeks now of everything. Um, I did get some messages from people, and they're like, how are we supposed to get all these supplies in time? I'm like, you're not. <laughs> it's okay. The goal is to do the education, to learn the stuff during the events. The classes are short, right? But that doesn't mean the content is short. The classes have been condensed so that they can fit everything into it and to share all of the ideas. But that doesn't mean it's going to be like, put this piece here and put this piece here and do exactly like this. We're going to make a bunch of those available in the class handouts if you want to recreate what the teachers did. But that's really not the goal. And these are actually the classes that I enjoy. So it's kind of coming from that point of, well, here's what I like. Hopefully other people will enjoy this style too. Um, 
I really love to learn skills and techniques and things that I can put into my own stuff. So I mentioned how I don't always follow the rules. I will say when I attend classes where a teacher has prepped a specific class and we're all sitting there with our prepared supplies and we're sitting like that, I usually do what the teacher just does, right? I'm like, they spent all the time designing this, creating this. They have this great class. Why would I not do that? And some people don't. They just like take their supplies and they're freewheeling and doing their own thing. I'm always like shocked that people can even do that because I'm like, I'm in this class. Or they're going to show me all the things. But, um, you know, that's it's just funny how everybody has like their own style. I sit there. I do the class exactly like the teacher does for something like that. And then I, you know, hopefully apply those ideas to something else. With these classes, they're a little different because things are quicker and more sped up, like you're still going to have time to like learn things, but you are not necessarily able to kind of keep up. But for me, the value is in learning the new stuff and then being able to go and put that into my actual practice. So I think that by the end of this weekend, we're, our brains are going to be like, <laughs> like blown because we'll have so many good ideas, but it's like the chance to incorporate all these fun ideas into our stuff. So hopefully that helps and makes sense and will make it fun for everybody. I'm pretty excited. We have 10 super great teachers. So that's been, um, yeah, it's been amazing. And Brielle's like, I am so excited. <laughs> uh, for myself, I, um, like I kind of started with some teachers that I knew were super good teachers. And then we started asking some other people that were like bigger names and people just hopped on board. And I was so encouraged by that. And I think that, um, yeah, just the mix of teachers is good. The mix of ideas, the mix of class um, styles and stuff. It's going to be fun. And then we also, because the class sections are short, we have time to spend a little bit, a little bit of time with all of the teachers and do some Q and A. So if, if it's like, what is that thing? How did you do that? Can you show me this again? Like we're going to be able to have a little bit of live interaction with, um, with them so that we can make that happen. So yeah, pretty excited about that. And um, yeah, just such a good, good thing. Um, registration for that will close Thursday night and then, oh, so happy you included Janet says Joyce. Oh my goodness. I, so I hadn't actually heard back from Janet. I had asked her like right away and then I hadn't heard back from her and I was like, oh, well maybe, maybe she doesn't want to do it. But like, she hadn't said no either. Right. Like I hadn't heard anything. And then finally I got her email and she was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in. She's like, I was away. <laughs> and so I was so relieved to get her, her message. And she was like, I'm in. So that was super, super good. Cause, um, I'm like, well, gee, I, I really thought she'd be perfect for this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, some teachers, I think people will know and some people, some people won't know some of the teachers, but I think that's part of the magic is when you get introduced to a new teacher and you're like, wow, actually that's, I used to go to a, a big scrapbook thing that was in Calgary every year and uh, it was called Camp Croppin and they had it for 10 or 11 years. And like my friend and I always like road trips to make sure that we would go. Um, yes. Dorothy says, Alice, I'm new. Here's our cost for the weekend. Yes. Um, there's a coupon that's out right now. If you use Smart 20, it's $20 off. And it is, uh, so for a total price of 109. And there's 10 classes, plus we have a keynote speaker, plus there's some prizes. And so there's a lot of stuff. You can go to scraphappy.org. And right near the top, you'll find a link for the Scrap Smarter experience. And it's like bright watercolor stuff. So that is the thing. Yeah, Heather said the Great Canadian Scrapbook Carnival is virtual this year. Yeah, it's kind of been the year of that. Um, I know uh, several 
of our Scrap Happy members actually signed up to do the scrapbook and cards today. Um, crop and create delivered. Brielle, Heather, I know I was in. Jacqueline, I, it just sounded so good. And um, that one, you will actually have like your kit, the full supplies, and you're going to like the teacher's classes, they have more time. So you can sit and create exactly what they're creating. And the boxes are going to be filled with magic. Like seriously, Catherine is amazing when it comes to stuff like that. So um, yeah, and they have, I think four teachers, right? Four teachers, but I'm not, in sh I'm not sure if it, that means like there's four classes or there's make and take, there's, there's going to be a lot in that box, but um, yeah, they, they actually closed registration early because she's like, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Cause I had chatted with her before she, um, had actually started selling the event. And then <laughs> she's like, I'm not sure how this is going to go. And I'm like, will people buy it? I'm like, they will buy it. <laughs> they will do it. And, uh, yeah, they bought it. <laughs> it's, it was amazing when you saw all the stuff that was included. So super fun. Um, but yeah, it's just another thing. Like they do live events normally, but right now you can't. So you kind of look and see what can you offer and uh, how can that work? I actually tried to get into another event. I don't know if anybody's doing that, the She Loves Color event, but I had forgot that they'd open registration. I I'd had an email, so it was like my own fault. Um, but uh, I'd missed out on it. They'd open registration. I'd forgot about it. And just recently I saw they had like four spots left, but when I went there, like I had to put my name on a waiting list. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's too bad, but it happened. Okay. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to change to my other camera. Hopefully my white balance will not fight with me today. There we go. Um, yeah, so there is, I think I'll do white background paper because that other one was white, although it did have a nice border around it. So maybe I'll trim down my background paper. I pulled out a few things that I thought were fun. So this is paper from Wild Whisper. It's their classic wood grains collection. And isn't that perfect for going out into the bush? So while I don't have my flavors kits, we'll play with a, uh, I'm not short on scrapbook supplies. <laughs> like, let's, <laughs> let's be real. I'm not short on scrapbook supplies. And then I also brought up some wood grains and stuff like that from Simple Stories, but I might just stay within this color. Ooh, look at that wood paper. Oh, so fun. Their papers are so different. If you guys haven't tried Wild Whisper yet, super fun. I do know that a cherry on top just started carrying their collections. So that might be easier for some people to get their hands on their stuff. And, uh, fun paper and like you can hear how thick it is like it's a good thick paper it does have like a little bit of a sheen to it right so it has like a slight you can kind of see a little bit of the shine on it. it has a little bit of a gloss feel to it but it's nice and sturdy paper which I appreciate this pack was um one of their small packs they usually do either six sheets or 12 sheets um wildwhisperdesigns.com. There it says there, that way. Um, they're based out of Calgary. They came and did one of our classes for a reunion last year when we hosted our Scrap Happy reunion. Okay, the one color I'm missing in this pack from the looks of it that I kind of need a little bit more of is some yellow, hey? So I'll have to find some accent yellow, but I think that'll be good. So, oh, Rochelle is here. Hey, Rochelle. <laughs> um, we watched parts of the video to reveal the flavors of the month kit. Obviously I don't have it, but I'm working with some other papers and um, I'm using the sketch from, well, no, I'm not using the sketch. I'm using one of your blog ones here. I'll just do a quick little screen share to up here. So I'm using this layout from the blog. Oh, yes. that, can you see that or is it on the wrong thing? Oh yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, I'm using this one as my base for my page, for my inspiration, and we'll kind of see where it goes from there. <laughs> but that is oh, okay. what I'm working with today. So, I'm a little late. It's, it's 
what is it, 930 here, and <laughs> kind of slept in a little bit this morning. <laughs> That's okay. So if everyone doesn't know, Rochelle is actually owner of the scrap room. So now you know you got the hookup. <laughs> so yeah, the the layout, the the sample layout that I pulled from the blog, I'm like, oh, that is just it pops. It's so colorful and bright. So I loved the design. Mm -hmm. Of course, we'll we'll make it my own with some layers and stuff like that. Um, nice. But yeah, it was super fun. So I'm like, that's gonna be a good jumping off point for my page. Yes. So that's the plan. And like three and a half weeks should have been plenty of time. Like I've never, I'm trying to think if I've had parcels, like in the meantime, I've ordered things that have arrived. So it's just, it's just, I think the luck of the draw right now with the, the world, the way it is and shipping international is always like, hold your breath. <laughs> but usually yeah. it's a lot. So uh, usually my stuff arrives. I know that our other uh, Canadian gals can, uh, can acknowledge that their stuff arrives, right, Jacqueline? Your stuff comes. <laughs> like, eventually. <laughs> eventually. Yeah. I would say like most of the time, like in the normal parts of the year, things take about two weeks. Like I've had things even as fast as 10 days Ooh. just through regular post. But right now things, everything has been slower and it just is what it is. So, so yeah, we're making do today, but our winner will receive a flavors of the month kit. I'm actually excited because I ordered myself a flavors of the month and the embellishment pack that there's like an extra add-ons there's extra add-ons that you can get and i'm like ooh, that sounds fun like more fun little things to play with so i'm gonna be playing with both of those and yeah i think that'll be good so there's a strip of one color that goes across this oh that might be good with this wood hmm. Oh. oh, I could use a couple of these border strips too. Oh, I love that. There are so many nice papers in this. This is good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut off some of the strips and create the strip out of like a few layered strips. I love it when packs have this. Now, question. Do you use your cutoff strips? Are you like, yes, those get, those make it to my pages or you're like, oh no, I forget to use them or like, um, to me, I look at those like a little bonus. I think they're super fun. So let's uh, go back here and there we go. So I'm definitely, yeah, Christina says she uses them for embellishments and tags. Tina Gale says, absolutely, I love border strips. I think it's just like, especially when they have like extra designs on them. And these ones all have extra designs. So it's not just like the back of the paper. Sometimes it's like showing you what's on the back or something. But when they have like extra little designs, it's like this little bonus that you get with your stuff, right? Super fun. And this one, this one. Oh, there's another red one. I think I'll sandwich the red ones. Oh, I could have cut that a little better. There, that's good. And yeah, adding like them to like embellishments and tags is perfect because you get like this just little little piece that makes it perfect. So they have a big cloud kind of that creates like a base for their title. I don't know if I will create something like that, but I'm kind of just looking at how they've created their layers. So they've got this one big layer here, and then there's another version that goes vertical like that there. And I think I will use this topographical one maybe? Oh, or maybe this woodcut one. Hmm. Problem when you have lots of good choices. <laughs> oh, 
what the oh maybe I will do the wood one. I wanted to bring some of that into it. Although this would be really good for scrapbooking my dad too. He is like a beaver. <laughs> he chops down like well actually they the county kind of wanted to annex some of their land um, right at the edge of their property because they wanted to widen the road near his house. And so they had to follow all these trees and he has been going and chopping them up and then he takes them back. A couple of years ago, he got a quad and my dad, like he's the kind of guy that should have had a quad his whole life. Like he would just be always busy around the yard but he never had a quad until recently, like a couple of years ago, we actually, my husband never used his quad. So he sold him that one. And oh, I should have put that in there. Um, and then he uh, has just loved it. Like he was meant to have a quad, like meant to have a quad. So it's been really fun watching my dad um, collect all the wood and then he takes it back and he got a wood splitter for Christmas one year. So he splits all the stuff and stacks it all up. They have a wood heater in their house. So, um, it makes perfect sense for him to like be doing all the stuff I want it to be about. Yeah. Right yeah. It's been yeah. fun. Yeah. He definitely does well with all of his work. So I think I want that a little narrower still. I thought I wanted it that wide. Making a lot of cuts, but <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Okay, good. Um, so Diane says, I've started sticking the printed color palettes to my craft journal. Oh, that's cool. Do you have a picture? Can you show? Is that, can, can I ask? <laughs> oh, here. Um, let me let me uh, spot light that. Oh, that's cool. So, what are the what are those colors from? Are they from like a pack or? Hiya. Um, from, they're from, uh, what do you call those strips on the side of papers? Like the cut off strips? Know. Those are the cut off yeah. strips? Oh, okay. Um, sometimes the colours in the paper are printed as on that cut off. Okay. And I'm terrible at choosing colour palettes. So, so you're just when, creating your own color palette book. Yes. Oh. I thought that's too valuable to chuck out. And this particular one came from my um, load price that um, I won a couple of loads ago. Well, there we go. <laughs> we, we had a lot of good prizes that, uh, that we had sent out there. So that was super fun. I'm glad I got to hear you. That was extra fun for me. <laughs> My grandma was Scottish, so <laughs> that was extra good. <laughs> so yeah, no, the color palettes. I definitely have like um, a board on my Pinterest, but I haven't done this before. Um, but I have like a board that's all color palettes because sometimes when you're working, you're like, what's going to go well with this? And uh it's nice to have those there to put together. So let's have a look. Um, some more, oh, that's fun for the pops of color. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to get some yellow. Oh, look at that, mm -hmm. my desk. <laughs> That'll work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like a really good highlight. It's got, we've got the red, we've got the teal and then little bits of the yellow. So that's fun. Um, not too big, just kind of framing in the corners. Okay.
there. Cool. Um, Sharon says, I'm interested in what else you're putting in your craft journal. So if you'd like to share that with us too, we'd love to see. I love to have a little show and tell as to what we're all making and creating. Okay. So I confessed a secret the other day. I almost never put my, uh, my platform away. I often have it right here on the floor beside me. That's like its second home <laughs> where it lives. So I'm going to add a little bit of texture to these pieces because this yellow is just plain uh, cardstock. So I think I'd like to add a little texture to that. This is my fancy basket. It's organized only so far as it has all of the same things in the same place, but they're not really organized. Oh, I see Mickey here. Um, I know I have, this one looks like gears, but I think that would be good. Oh, I've got some clouds. That would be a kind of like a nod to the original inspiration. Um, lots of plants. Oh, that should work. So, yeah. Oh, what did I do? How did I get those to work the other day? Um, I've got new plates that are actually, um, they actually work again because my last ones were in bad shape. But it kind of changed the way some of my layers worked in my machine. And I was like, oh, well, that's different. Um, okay. Let's put this here. So does anybody have big plans for this weekend? Anything else that you're working on? Love to know. Um, got it. <laughs> Open things and a sandwich here. It must have just been that other template was super thick. That did it. the texture on there. I like to get a little bit of that. And do I have more of the red in the papers? I'd like to bring more of that red in if I could. Um, it has more red on it. Isn't that pretty? Oh, so pretty. Mm. And this one kind of has texture, but I think if I do like a A wood grain one. Something to make it more tactile would be good. Dots. Well, here's a question. Who here thinks to actually do these things? Oh, do we have someone sharing? Bobby, are you sharing? I was like, what do you mean? What are your big plans? This is my plan. I love it. And Christina says she's finishing her 2017 Project Life album. So do we, are you trying to share right now, Bobby? 
Um, I don't hear her, so I'm just going to cancel that right now because it's not uh, on a page. If you open up a window and if you want to share something, if you have something ready, then go ahead and, and try the share again. There. Just add something that adds a little texture to this. I thought I had a wood grain one, but oh, who knows? I probably do. <laughs> I think I've almost reached the point where I could sort them into categories. Oh, here we go. Look at that. It's even going the right way. We'll try that. Here we go. And Mickey says, I just subscribed to the sticky subscription yesterday and I actually played in my planner. It was a lot of fun, but totally new for me. So that's some kind of planner thing. I actually have never heard of this one before. That's a new one to me. It's sticky. Oh, that was aggressive an aggressive one. <laughs> Do you guys have that? Do you have some folders that are overly aggressive that cut your paper? That one is definitely, let me toss that over there. It's my paper. And that's fine. I can still use it. It'll be okay. But it definitely, um, it was hard on it. <laughs> it was like really mean. And if I was doing a different paper where that was going to be a problem, I would not be happy with it. Um, I wanted to do one more with, oh, I was going to do the red on this side. Yeah, it'll still work, but I should have done it the other way then. It would be fine. And then a uh, little bit more with which of their colors to use. Let's have a look at, oh, my white balance went all wonky again, did it? There we go. Uh, Jean says, yes, I've had that happen with embossing folders. I think it's the paper. And Deb says, if your folder is too deep, it helps to mist the paper with water to soften it before embossing. And so I've never thought of doing that because I've totally done that when you crinkle paper. So I think that's one of the coolest things is if you want to like get like soft crinkled paper, you can mist it and then you can crumple it. And when you unfold it, you'll have soft crumples without tearing the paper up. But I've never thought of trying that with an embossing folder. That is a very good tip. And Mickey says that Sticky is a sticker subscription service. Sure, she's gonna show us. I, uh, I'd like to see. Um, I will um, spotlight you up. Okay, Hello. you're on, Mickey. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, put, put it up here so you can actually see my messy desk. So this, I, I forget who I heard about it from. There was a scrapbooker who was doing, or somebody who was, that I follow on YouTube, was doing a um, traveler's notebook for Japan, and they picked up one of the subscriptions. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I'm not really like a planner girl person, and so I thought I would pick it up and just kind of have a little something fun because I always get like I'll get things for my planner and then think from like scrapbooking places and then I think oh but I could use this on a layout and then I never use them so it came in a cute little uh, pouch and it oh. has holes if you wanted to put that on and so it came with 
a rainbow paper clip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rainbow paper clip. And then it's like all really kind of flat things, right? Because they're going to yeah. go into a planner. This is actually a little notepad. Okay. Like a post it notepad. And then it came with two little uh, art postcards. So, so I'm seeing like a really like kind of cartoony graphic kind of style, right? Like. So um, the name of this, yeah, the name of this particular one was Dark Rainbow. Oh. And so they have like three different types of subscriptions that you can get. There's the retro, pop, and I think botanical. And so these are some of the stickers. So you can see they have like the, the sheen to them, but they're all nature-y. And then this one is rainbows and hearts. You know, again, kind of that iridescent look. Oh. And then kind of cartoony. And it's called sticky with two eyes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Like yeah. two eyes at the end. Sticky yeah. <laughs> with two yeah. eyes at the end instead of a Y. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Backpacks. Uh, these girls, a uh, washi tape sheet, and then. So, like, have you been yeah. doing this for very long? Have you tried them, or was this your first kit from this them? This is my first kit, so I just now. I just got it on the thirteenth. So for a while, I'm just gonna go back to. Uh, here thank you so much for showing us yeah, yeah for a while here i actually had a um i was getting a kit from scarlet lime it's like the planner society or something and they were so cool with all these pieces and i was just like oh but it was one of those things like i don't make a brand new book for my planning every single month and like I was getting so many pieces and so many things and some of them I would put onto my scrapbook pages because that was a good way to use some of the stuff but it was just like I guess I don't need a whole book to plan stuff like I have one book and I it was just a lot more stuff than what I needed at the time I'm like okay I think I think we need to step this back a little bit and and bring this back into a realm where um, it makes a little more sense for me, but uh, gosh, I love this stuff so much. <laughs> it was like too much, but it was just, it was too adjacent to the stuff that I want to do and where I want to have my focus, I think. And I think that that was like the really big lesson that I had out of that is that, well, the planning stuff is really fun. And I don't mind going back into my planner book and decorating some pages because I do that sometimes. It's just not my focus, right? Like I, um, I like my planner book to be functional, um, but it's not, and it's pretty, I pick a pretty one, but I just need it to be functional. So while I do sometimes go back and decorate some of the pages in it, that's not my goal. It's, it's more of, a work book than a pretty book. <laughs> so, I, and I just needed it to be, to work harder for me. So, and I use colors to kind of differentiate, differentiate things, but you can see from time to time here, let me show you back on this camera. Um, so, oh, let me get the white balance ready again. Um, so from time to time I do go in and I'll decorate my weekly pages, but I only do that like when I'm um, just adding little stamps here and there, right? I only do it after I have done 
my week, right? Like when that week is over and then if I'm sitting and I want to just fiddle and play or test new stamps that I just got, um, I'll go back and I'll add some little things into the week it weeks. They're, these are out of the book because once they're like, once that's passed, I keep them off to the side. I don't keep them in my physical planning book. I know this is off the topic of scrapbooking, but I think that, you know, anything that helps us kind of get to where we want to be <laughs> and get our goals done. Um, Diane says, does anyone remember the planner April fools video? No. If you've, it was from paper clipping. Oh, Mickey says yes. I'm sure I've seen that actually. This is like, it's like sparking something. And like she went like super ultimate detailed. It was like overly planned and overly. And then she's like, guys, I would never do this. This is like insane, right? Like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. Sharon says it's a good idea to stamp new stamps in like the week after it's done. Yeah, because then you can see like what do you have left for space, right? Some sometimes you have more space, and sometimes you have less space. Like so, and I don't do it all the time. Like here, this one's not done, but you know, it's uh it's just a good thing. If I have new stuff coming in, usually the new stuff arrives and I'm dying to use it, but I'm not sitting down necessarily to make a scrapbook page with it at that moment, but it's a good way to like be like, oh, new toys, and then I get to actually try them out. <laughs> so, that, uh, that's just a little peek into the system that I kind of use. All right, this needs this. I think I'm gonna take another piece of this yellow. I think that's just what I need. And that's gonna be, let's make that happen because that red is just not making me go, yay. I keep trying to avoid using it. So um, yeah, I don't know, it's too, too earthy for me, I guess, at this moment. After I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna use this. I'm like, no, nope, no, I'm not. <laughs> We're allowed to change our mind and we can keep changing it. And that's totally fine. Okay, like that really squished it and that did not break. So this folder was already way better. <laughs> so there, I've got one now that has the fern things, one that has the cloud things. They're super cute. I only have the two pictures, so I think that's gonna just work better. Back to your storage space there. Okay, I do like those. I just need this to be brighter and lighter. And this, excellent. Yeah, okay, this is feeling better now. I was losing some of that brightness and I think that I definitely needed to revisit that. Okay, that has a super fun little banner. That would be a good start to kind of the area where I'm gonna add my words. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> uh, Diane says go through four drawers before you can record your dental appointment. <laughs> yeah. There's, and like, if people want to plan that and they're like loving, like, all of the stuff for planning, then that's like super fun, right? Like you should totally do the things that you love. And if it helps keep you organized, if it keeps you on the stuff, yeah, so good. And uh, Mickey says, I thought it was hilarious. She was like, this is the washi I use for people I don't really like. <laughs> okay, well, I think we all do that, right? Like in our Scrappy, maybe it's just me, but <laughs> we don't we do that with our scrappy supplies. It's like, 
um, am I going to put this on this page? Well, no, I'm going to save that for like a good page or something like, and like, why, what are we saving supplies for? I'm never going to run out. Like, let's be real. I'm not going to run out of scrapbooking supplies. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's just pretty funny in like the whole, uh, yeah. But yeah, if um, if you like to do that stuff and you and you want to like really explore it, like there are so many good things out for that. Mickey says we have our precious supplies. I know, and I think any time now when I kind of get that feeling like something, oh no, I can't use this. It actually pushes me now. It's like I've kind of like trained my brain. It's like no, why am I saving that? <laughs> it's like. I bought it to scrapbook with. I'm actually trying to use it on this page. Why would I not use it? And it's so frustrating when, you know, we get that little mental game kind of playing in our head where we're like trying to convince ourselves to hoard our supplies. And I'm pretty good at convincing myself, let me just say. Uh yeah, Mickey says, I got the sticky stickers subscription because I like them, but I don't love them and I could use them on layout. So it's perfect for this kind of play. <laughs> I know it's like, this stuff is just too good to use. So been there. Like, and sometimes like the papers are so beautiful. Okay. So I literally have this one that I pulled onto my desk that I thought I might put on this page today, but then I decided to go in this other direction, but that was fine. But I love the pattern on this paper so much that I've pulled it out a few times. It hasn't been used yet, but I really need to use it because I've been hoarding it. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, maybe you don't know this page, but I just need to like cut it up and use it. So if I finish this page, I'm going to use this paper. I'll find a picture to put on it. <laughs> like maybe it'll be like my, my update of my garden, which is like... <laughs> a jungle. I'm like, my jungle is over on the other side of the house. I mean, my garden is over on the other side of the house. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty. This one is from Scrapbook Customs and it's called Wildflowers and Green. I've had it for a little while and I've pulled it out a few times and it's never made the cut, but sometimes you need other, like when you have other papers, they're sending you in a different direction. So that's okay. As long as I don't like end up hoarding it forever. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's see, this needs to come a little bit closer. Oh. Well, look at this, I've got some little sunshines. Those are cute. Freckled fawn. Maybe I've got some sequins that this page needs or something too. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm gonna have to stick some of my background pieces down. I might want to trim them just a little bit. Okay, so Stacy says, I make myself use the pretty paper first. Yay! Sharon says, I need advice on which way paper should turn. Oh, like asking us right now? Oh, okay. Like we want, we want to help. Okay. Uh, let's put you up on a spotlight and I'll ask you to unmute. Are you good? Can I hear you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> oh, so what does everybody vote? Do you like it when they're vertical or do you like it when they're horizontal? Okay. I know what I'm voting for. So horizontal or vertical. And is this Christmas paper, Sharon? Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm seeing votes, horizontal, vertical, vertical, vertical. Dorothy says it works either way, Sharon. Diane says horizontal, vertical, horizontal. I'm personally liking the horizontal. There, That's my opinion. Yes. But like, from judging from how many people are saying vertical, there's not a wrong answer. Okay. So she's got a Christmas tree, which has that vertical element in it. 
but I think like when I, I look like it. at it, it looks like a tree branch and to me, tree branches grow out, which is why I would vote that All way. Right. That's what I think. Okay. Horizontal. Yeah. And see, Brielle says with the tree, I would go vertical. So like, there's not a wrong answer. <laughs> So there's not a wrong answer. Okay, so you. we totally just muddied the water and, and just told you there's, there, there's no right answer there. At least you inspired me to scrap some Christmas pictures today. Yay. Have, That's like so happy. While we were talking. I think if I like, you know how like people have like little, like the, um, the little dancing gifts or something like that, that you can put on like Insta stories and stuff. If I was going to have a dancing gif or something, I think I would have like the, yay! <laughs> like the little hand clap thing. Oh, and Diana saying your storage is gorgeous. Yeah. Sharon's storage, like, oh, like her stuff oh. is like, ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, it's super fun. I know. I see other people's pay, like the rooms, and I'm like, oh, I'd love to go and play in there. <laughs> um, Bobby says, Alice, supper's ready, but she made it. Yay, I'm so glad that you made it today. That's awesome. Because she's like in love from Durban, and I will join you next month. Yeah, like, that's like South Africa, right? Like we got like people all around the world. <laughs> I love that so much um, that we get to hang out with people from everywhere. Um, like my scrappy friends aren't just here in Whitecourt. <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, I encourage all my friends to scrapbook, but you know, some people for whatever reason <laughs> just don't want to do that as much as I do. But I think um, being able to connect with, with other people that kind of get it, that's been a huge thing for me. Yes, I appreciate getting the chance to hang out with everybody. Okay, so I think I'm going to try sticking things down before we're going to commit. <laughs> Stick some stuff down. Oh, I was talking about mounting it on a different background. Ooh. I should have used that paper for the background. Ooh, I should have, but I didn't. Okay. Oh, that would work. That would bring a little touch of that red into it too. Okay, I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to have to cut the middle out. So I want to cut, I'm going to cut my white paper and make like, just cut it down a little bit so that it can go in the middle of this other paper. But like, I, I kind of want to save like the middle piece of it. So then I could always accent with it, right? To keep my uh, stuff together. Does anybody else do that? Or the, you're like, Alice, you have more paper than you'll ever need to accent. This is kind of part of the kit. So, <laughs> so I'm willing to make the... <laughs> Vicky's like, I totally do that. <laughs> She's and it's like, do I need to do that? No, but maybe I just need that little tiny bit of coordinating paper that goes with this, right? Maybe. Maybe I don't. But, you know, if I did, I'd be sad not to have it when I know that it's like sitting right there. <laughs> and it really is easy to do. There we go. I have my extra piece. And we have reached the top of the hour, which means that I think it would be a good time. Was that how much I want to have? Yeah, I think that'd be good. I think we've reached a time where it'd be really good to have a draw. Don't you think? <laughs> um, I think a draw would be really good. So we have 34 people in the house. One of them is me. So if we take me off the list, you have a one in 33 chance of winning. And I will pull up a random number generator uh, on my phone. And we will pick a winner. Oh, 
and the number generator. Oh, that's funny. It's, it gave me a random name generator because apparently I didn't type all the words. <laughs> now I'm like kind of curious. I'm like, what kind of random name are you going to give me? <laughs> okay. So here we go. Um, generate, generate, generate. 28. So let's scroll down this list. And we're going to say Nadine Valentine. Nadine, you are our winner of the day. Congratulations to Nadine. She will win the kit from the scrap room and it is the flavor of the month. So let's go back and just take a quick little peek at that video again so that you can see what Nadine is going to be enjoying this month. So, uh, is this the right one? Yes. So this is... Hello and welcome to The Scrap Room. I'm Tina Gill, here to show you the August have, like, Flavors of the peak. Month kit. The Flavors of the Month is our bigger kit. It includes four brand new collections four each and every month. You'll get cardstock, patterned paper, and embellishments. You're also going to receive four recipe cards, one for each one of the collections. This is a recipe card that's designed by the design team. They'll give you a full color photograph of the finished layout and then cutting and assembly instructions. So you can follow right along with our design team, or of course you can go off and create whatever you like with your kits. Okay, so that is what Nadine is going to receive, which is the Flavors of the Month kit. And I think the last I saw, okay, up here it says, the August double shot kit, pattern paper, and cardstock kits are sold out, but um, the flavors of the month and the embellishment kit are still available. So let's go and click this and have a look. So here is the flavors of the month club, and it's not expensive. This is like US dollars for any Canadian gals or other. This is in US dollars, but $25.95. And then you can also get additional kits like the embellishment kits. And so that just brings you a bunch of extra fun goodies. There's also a pattern paper kit, cardstock kit. So you can like get them all sent in, in one package, right? When you place you, your whichever is like your main order, the other ones kind of become add-ons to that. And Rochelle, if I'm saying something wrong, correct me since you're here. This is like the perfect opportunity if I'm telling them wrong. Yeah, and yeah. as a bonus, when you sign up, you can choose to get the custom or like the, the, the coffee with it. So you get like a little sample of coffee so you can sit and scrapbook and sip your coffee all at the same time. So that is scrap room or scrap dash room.com. That's that's the address that you want to go to. So congratulations to Nadine. Nadine, I'm going to ask you to email me at support at scraphappy.org, make sure it's .org, and uh, you will get your kit. I'll hook you up for that. Um, Nadine. So, yay. Oh, she says, woohoo, thank you. So I know she's heard it. So I'm like, whew, that's always good when, when our winner hears. So congrats. That's super fun. So yeah, I can't wait to play with my kids. And I'm kind of debating like of possibly doing like a little bonus session or something. I don't know what I'm going to do, but um, I know I'm going to want to play with this kid when I get it in the mail. And it's more fun when I can hang out with friends. So we'll see. So, now this is actually starting to come together pretty good. 
yeah, this is cute. Super cute. Okay, and let's, ooh, adhesive. I usually have like three or four of them on the go. <laughs> because they kind of get buried <laughs> on my desk. <laughs> oh, I have a backup one here. There we go. There we go. Backup adhesive. So let's stick stuff together. That'll be fun. Yeah, congratulations, Nadine. Everybody's a little jealous, but you know, they're all really happy for you. <laughs> um, yeah, so other cool things as I'm sticking things together, because I'm actually gonna um actually gonna do that here. Other cool things. I told you that August is a super exciting month. August is the 10 year anniversary of the Scrap Happy membership. Um, I didn't actually start Scrap Happy, so I can't take credit for all 10 years of that, but I've been running Scrap Happy for four and a half years now, and it has just been such a joy for me. I was a member before that. Mickey says, wow, I can't believe it's been 10 years. I know, it's like so cool. And I really wanted to do something special to mark this um, uh, like this time. So when scrap, when scrapbooking, when scrap happy started as a membership group, it, um, there was like a limited time offer where you could actually join as a lifetime member in the very beginning. So it was like a one-time fee and you're in it for life. So those people got a really good deal. I'm just saying, got a really good deal. Cause here we are 10 years later, and they're still in it and it's so good. And I heard somebody talking somewhere. They're like, Oh, those people, like they're not paying you. Like, I'm like, are you kidding? Those people made this happen. Like, I think like, I don't look at it like that at all. I'm like, those people are contributing members. However, over the years, some of the people have kind of like drifted off and disappeared. So one of the things that I really wanted to do was to reach out to some of the lifetime members that had kind of drifted away over the years. And we reached out to um, them and said, Hey, did you know, like, we're still a thing and you still have a lifetime membership. Like that didn't disappear. And we have had some of the sweetest responses to that and people that are happy to dive back into scrapbooking or, you know, they kind of fallen off the scrapbooking train for a while, but they're diving back into it. And I just think that that was so good. I was so glad like Dieter and I had talked about, you know, how we can get these people engaged. And like, there's some I might not have reached out to because I just didn't have like a new enough email address. We had a few that, that bounced, but, um, as much as possible, we reached out to members that had, we hadn't heard from in a while and just said, you know, Hey, your membership is still valid. This is where you go. This is how you get into this. Let us know if you don't want to be involved because we won't keep bugging you again. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the response has been super positive and I'm just happy to engage these members that were there for us right from the beginning. So that's been a really fun thing that we did um, here, kind of going into this month, right? To kind of mark our 10 years. But we also, you know, had a few bigger things. <laughs> Mickey says, I'm jealous. I didn't have the money at the time. I love the load stuff and the true scrap events. Load A to Z really helped me a ton. And I think that was the first look. Maybe like, I wasn't a member right from the beginning. So I wasn't one of those lifetime members. I think I am now, <laughs> but I'm a lifer now. But um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, just so many cool things have come out of the, the membership and connecting people. And, you know, like anything, I think one of the things that has made it be successful has been how things shift over time. Like we kind of have our pillar things that have stayed, but things have shifted. And I, I love that, um, 
you know, that's kind of kept us together. We've kind of explored technology over time and we're still exploring some technology, but I'm looking into some good new options for that to kind of make things work a little more seamlessly. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted this to be special. So let's engage some of our lifetime members that had fallen by the side been trying to engage some of the lifetime members that we see a lot that are, um, you know, still active members of the group. I'm waving at you, Brielle. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I'm trying to um, encourage people to be involved in different ways. And this summer during our uh, load mini that we hosted, it's like a seven day mini short version of our layout a day challenge that we host in February, May, and October. Um, we did like this little one week version and I just needed like seven people to, to make some pages. And I had reached out to my friend, Deborah and said, Deborah, do you think you could make a page? And she's like, well, I've never done this before. Like she'd never been one of our featured designers. And I'm like, what? Because she's one of our lifetime members. I'm like, how has this not happened before? And like, I know back in the early days, like Lane had a few designers that did multiple pages. But one of the things that we started when I was doing like the load challenges was bringing more people in. It's a little more it's interesting. <laughs> Let's just go with that. It's a little interesting because there's so many moving parts when you're bringing like 30, 31, 28 designers onto, um, to submit the stuff. Like it makes it a little bit interesting. So, um, but, it, and people that aren't used to sharing, like, right. When you have like a design team, they're used to submitting things like that, but you're working with people that are like, how do you send this? Oh, and like small, small file sizes. Cause some emails automatically resize and just sorting out all the things to, to get the stuff in the best way. But it's been so good because we see such a cross section of what scrapbooking really looks like to scrapbookers. And I really love that because as much as I drool like the next person over designer pages, I really like to see what people just like me are actually creating in like the world of scrapbooking. And so that's been a lot of fun. And the page that Deborah submitted was like so good. So I was just like, I'm so glad that I had reached out to her to ask her to kind of participate in that, in that way. And, uh, just to see what people are doing. And we have several scrapbookers within our group right now that have been learning digi skills. And that has been so fun to kind of see them sharing pages. Like you see some through the load challenges when that's all working right. And um, yeah, just picking up the new skills. Like, and you know, some of them are like, well, I didn't even know if I could learn this. And I'm like, and then they're killing it and they're just using all these new skills and the new techniques and tricks. And it's awesome to kind of see the way that we can kind of connect and learn the new stuff as we go. So shout out to our uh, newer digi gals. Heather says, yeah, they let me lurk. <laughs> Danielle was the scrapper on the street. I don't know how she kept up. I finally met her last August when I went to Disney. Did you get to meet up with her? That is so awesome. Uh, yeah, Danny is uh, still one of our Scrap Happy members. And actually, we have just, another big thing that we've done this month to celebrate is we have kick started some life into our Scrap Happy blog. I wanted to bring some more voices in. I was not succeeding in doing a blog by myself. So teacher was like, hey, Alice, you keep talking about wanting to do this. Do you want me to help you? I'm like, yes, that would be great. So we have kickstarted our blog on the Scrap Happy site to bring more inspiration. And we've brought together a small team. I had actually asked some girls last year to help and, and I was not the best organizer at the time. Um, so Kathy says, Kathy says, oh, I love the blog. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it is all people that are kind of new to some of this, like, or not all, but yeah, it's um, really exciting. So we're bringing in some different voices and we brought back Danny and she's, 
it's just so good to see her stuff again, to have her doing this. And she was so excited to come back. Mickey's like, she's wonderful. I know. So good. And then, um, let's see this week. Um, oh shoot. Why am I, why am I blanking? Um, Allison's post came up this week too. And like, to me, like, her stuff is kind of like, she designs exactly like Chamel, like the one she like breaks down a page and how to do stuff. So she's like the unrecognized Chamel <laughs> of, of our group is what I kind of always, that's kind of how, how I think of her style. And uh, yeah, so that's been fun. April's going to come and bring us some card inspiration. We have Kathy McElfresh. She's going to be, I think I just ran out of stuff. The empty. Oh, I've changed. Oh, push. There we go. Um, oh, it totally is. Well, there we go. I've used up. I've scrapbooked enough to actually use up some adhesive. <laughs> but <laughs> keep more at the hand. Um, Canada's answer to Chamel. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I know. And like, she's going to be like, oh gosh, don't set those expectations. Cause she's like super, uh, <laughs> super sweet. But, um, yeah, so good. So check out Allison's post. Um, yeah, we have April. She's been like going hard into cards and doing all kinds of fun stuff with cards. So I can't wait to see what she's sharing kind of on the card realm. Um, and then we have Kathy McElfresh and, Kathy likes to use a lot of layers and a lot of mixed media and just like, she's all about the stuff, like more is more. And so I was so excited to bring her in to share some of that with us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have um, some featured um, digi designers as well. So that's kind of fun because, you know, there's so many different ways to digi scrap. So I think, um, we wanted to bring some more voices into that. So it's kind of a, a mix mash of different scrappy styles and different ways and different like craftiness, but it's a really good way to kind of look at this whole hobby. <laughs> Please somebody find me a better word than hobby. Please. I, I hate calling scrapbooking a hobby. It is so much more than a hobby. Like hobby is like, yeah, <laughs> it's passion project. I know like this passion project of scrapbooking. It's, you know, it's about the connections we make. It's about telling life stories and that's more than a hobby. Like when you make a ceramic thing and you like to paint a ceramic thing, that's like a hobby. <laughs> but when you but when you're telling your life stories, that is more. Diane's like, story art? Mickey says it's a lifestyle. I know. <laughs> like, we just, we don't have the words, like, used often enough to really, I think, do us justice for, for you know, what we're creating and what we're doing. I just, Yeah little rant. <laughs> Scrapbooking is a mindset. We are historians to share. Exactly. And like, sometimes we just want to play, right? We just want to touch the pretty paper and be like, yay, this is awesome and wonderful. Um, so yeah, that was the blog that we've kind of kickstarted some life into and man, it feels full of life. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Hi, Heather and son. <laughs> That's my little lurker. <laughs> <laughs> Her lurker. Yeah. And then, so we had one more big thing that we've launched. So it's the Scrap Smart Experience. We've got the blog where we're reconnecting with members. But we also, um, so I've been working on this for a while. We launched the Scrap Happier podcast this month. So yeah, that came out this week. I was like so happy to kind of make that happen. There was a little time period where I was like, oh gosh, I don't know if I'll get this all together. 
but it has launched. I'm so excited. I've heard some nice things, but if you see other things, you're like, Alice, please just send me a quick email and be like, Alice, you know, you do this thing all the time. It's so obnoxious or annoying. Like just go ahead. Tell me, <laughs> I would love to hear it. Be like, Alice, you always smack your lips before you do this thing. I'm like, I try to pick up on stuff like that. So I don't have that being a thing too much or, um, yeah, too many ums. Usually. Okay. So confession, you'll hear it now. I must, I'm scared to tell you cause now you'll hear it. So <laughs> I say so way too much. My husband, oh, I know. Heather's like, yes. <laughs> My husband busts me on it all the time. <laughs> or, and <laughs> it's my filler when I'm thinking about something and try, try, try to cut back on that. But yeah, now I've confessed it. You'll hear it for sure. <laughs> but it's fine. It's, it's really me. It's really what I do. And it's just part of how I am, I guess. But I can try to improve. <laughs> Tina says, I do the same thing. I've tried to think of another word. <laughs> Kathy says, that's what makes it more personal. And the best thing about pre-recording is being able to cut them out. <laughs> I, I will confess, I definitely edited some of them out. I left some because I think it would be very disingenuous if I took them all out, but I left some in and it was super fun. Joyce says, I loved our daily meetups in June and the rainbow load. I know it's been a, such a fun year as much as like life, the world and as it is right now, there has so much chaos. I think being able to connect with other people through scrapbooking has been one of the greatest joys that has come out of this year. Spending more time with my family, like my immediate family, and then my some of my extended family, like my mom and dad and my brothers. Once we were allowed to kind of all hang out, we have camped in my brother's backyard like almost every weekend this year. Um, and, you know, like, it's been really good to be able to do that. So yeah, it's kind of fun. Actually, last night, my brother uh, brought his trailer here to our yard and my mom actually agreed to come and stay here. So my family is here and they are uh, camping in my yard. They, uh, we, we sat in the hot tub till about midnight last night <laughs> and then we all got up and hopped back in the hot tub this morning. <laughs> so I, I was, uh, I was, uh, chilling in the hot tub, <laughs> actually cooking in the hot tub before we, we started our, our scrapbooking here today. So, fun times. Yeah, no, it's super good. And, uh, we bought a tent. I bought a tent for going over the hot tub this year. And that has been a game changer for being able to actually use our hot tub because mosquitoes are a thing <laughs> and they are an awful, wicked, horrible thing. <laughs> but yeah, Christine is like, sounds nice. We have to wait until November before the hot tub is comfortable. Yeah. Normally we do most of our hot tubbing in the winter because of the mosquitoes. Yeah. In Phoenix. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be hopping into a hot, hot tub. <laughs> no, it'd be like air conditioning all the time. <laughs> Actually, um, Lane had hosted two of our scrap happy reunions in Phoenix. And when I was there, I'm like, how do people live here? I just, how do they live here? This is too hot. I can't even think <laughs> like you can't breathe in this, but super fun. Ooh, I see Laura is getting really crafty. She's like splashing stuff and splattering. Ooh, it looks fun. <laughs> Kathy says, same in Florida, hot and mosquitoes. I can't even imagine. What is that hot here? Our mosquitoes are nowhere to be found. I have to say, like they are Canadian mosquitoes. They're like, nope, too hot. <laughs> so yeah, all oh, the fun things. Mosquitoes are not one of them. <laughs> but yeah, this 
it's been a fun year. So if you haven't heard the podcast yet, I, we released with three episodes. New episodes will go live on Tuesdays. So watch for that this coming Tuesday. And we had two episodes, kind of like the first kind of get to know me, why am I even doing this kind of episode? And then um, the we talked about um, why do you scrapbook? So to me, that's like, it's such a passion. I almost hoarded that topic because I was scared of like not doing it justice. And for me, it's like such a passion. Like I think that when we think about and kind of examine what we're trying to accomplish with our scrapbooking, it really helps us to actually create that then, right? If we are just playing and not really thinking about it, we might get distracted and it happens. It totally happens, right? I've been down that road where I make pages that are pretty that don't tell the stories, but a big part of why I create, like I love to play, like totally love that. That's on the list. But the biggest part of why I create is because I want to tell the stories about our life. I want to share those things that the pictures themselves just don't tell. And you know, I want my family to be able to see what my perspective is. So with all of that, I, um, we recorded episode two is why do you scrapbook? And I really enjoyed, um, kind of digging into that. I'd asked some of the gals in our scrap happy group and some of them, oh, like, I'm kind of getting goosebumps because some of the responses were so good and like there were so many good ones and I couldn't like include them all. It would have been like, Oh, and this all, <laughs> but I included like five because I just couldn't restrain it. I was like going to do like three, but I couldn't help it. They were too good. And I really, really, um, just hearing people's reasons why this is important to them. That's why I have the whole hobby issue, right? Like it just, doesn't feel strong enough for that. And I think like we can enjoy the fun, the crafty, the pretty paper. We can enjoy the fact that we're like doing something with our photos and we can enjoy the stories all at the same time, as long as we kind of, you know, make sure that we're kind of going in that right direction and that right path. So I really, um, I'm really glad that I didn't kind of hoard that episode for later, right? And that we kind of started there because it really helps me to set the intention for where this is going. Jacqueline says, Alice, you're such a good interview. Your talk with Sarah was great. Oh my gosh. I was so nervous about that. And I have to confess, <laughs> like interviewing, like the first time I went to Creativation, that was my first time I've ever done an interview, guys. <laughs> like that was that was scary. And like, it's there on video and like the editing, like we could do some, but some of it was going to be there no matter what. So that was scary. So I've been going to creativation for four years and talking with the designers and talking with the different companies about their products. I love doing that. I don't know what's happening this January, but I love it so much. So I'm hoping that that doesn't get missed. Um, Right now, it looks like things are going ahead, whether that's going to be practical or not. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, but yeah, um, doing this one for the podcast, like I asked Sarah, and one of the reasons I wanted to ask like a friend first, because I'm like, I have to kind of learn how to do this. I've been interviewed on a podcast, but it's so different when you're on the other side and you're like, I'm responsible for making this turn out good now. <laughs> when you're just answering somebody's questions, that part was great. <laughs> um, and cause I had just had the chat with Stacy Julian on her podcast. I've chatted with Tracy and Tiffany from the scrap girls podcast a few times. So, you know, I wasn't, uh, that side of things. It's super fun, but bye Sharon. Um, yeah. Talking with Sarah, we had such a good conversation I'll confess you guys didn't hear our first version. My audio stuff just wasn't what I needed it to be. And she was such a sweet person. <laughs> she was such a sweetheart because she's, I said, Sarah, 
I can edit this and I can edit this and I will edit this to make us sound as good as possible. Like, trust me, I'm not going to put it out if it's like not good. But I said, we just had too many audio issues. So we sorted out the audio issues we re-recorded. And honestly, our conversation was even better because like I knew some of the things that she would say and I was able to kind of dig into things a little better. She responded with some of the things just more, more, um, coherent, not coherent, like succinct, right? Like that's like where it's tighter and, and better, right? Like, is that the right word? Heather, my English teacher, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but yeah, her responses were just, um, yeah, so good. So I'm so glad to hear that you enjoyed her, her episode. Joyce says, you have really encouraged me to scrapbook about me. Yay! <laughs> that was like the best answer that I could even see. And Diane says, she just finished her fourth layout of the afternoon. I wish I had like my audio things that I have when I do uh, the YouTube live streams because then I have like this little applause thing and everything. Oh, and I got a new toy for my live stream. So I think come September, I might be doing some more of those again because I've enjoyed them so much. And I missed um, April. We did in April, we did uh, five days a week, live, live streams on YouTube. And then in May, we did two times a week. And those were so fun and I've kind of missed them, but I definitely needed the space to kind of work on these other projects. So um, that might come back here in September a little bit. Diane, can, yes, absolutely. Diane has some stuff to share. Thank you so much. Um, I will ask you to unmute or maybe just feel free to unmute <laughs> and I will spotlight you up. So, all right, okay, spotlight works better than share perhaps yes okay um my lockdown purchase was a brother scan and cut <gasps> so i have been given it a serious workout <laughs> so using the um calligraphy pens um just drawing on so cool you did that with the scan and cut and it it worked yep. it all the words yep it did all the drawn, which is pretty cool. Um, and similarly, without calligraphy, just with the kind of normal scan and cut um, letters, again, just drawing with pens, um, which is great because it looks just like stamping. Mm -hmm. So I'm pleased with that. Um, the primary reason I use die cutters is to save money on letter stickers mm -hmm. um, you probably won't be able to see it very well it says a good do which is a mum catchphrase whenever we get together or when at the end of any family get together she'll say we've had a good do <laughs> so I cut I mostly use silhouette it was a silhouette portrait I had before it's uh, I decided to upgrade with my quarant savings um, and I've been cutting out uh, vinyl letters and some more vinyl letters. Grand Christmas games. Cool. Now, I didn't do the last load because what with all the worldly craziness, I thought my head just can't cope with another pressure. Because I think if you're going to commit to load, you, ha you have to be in the right headspace. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good. Um, to have a really productive crafty day yeah. it's a good reflection on improving mental health and world circumstance I think <laughs> Stacy said it looks like that was money well spent and Kathy's like that's awesome and it's gorgeous <laughs> yeah but Diane said very nice it never ceases to amaze me when people buy these things and then say in groups in Facebook groups Oh, and I've, it's been in the box for a year. <laughs> it's too much money. No, <laughs> but that's the Scots woman in me. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. My dad was, was raised in Wales, like, uh, but my gran is, is, was Scottish. And, and so 
<laughs> I have those family roots. <laughs> the kids, it took me such, I did such a lot of research trying to figure out if I was going to buy a silhouette, a cry. You, you did, it so long to yes, it did take me so long to decide. Trying to figure out if to get a cry cut, a, a cricket, a silhouette, or a scanning cut. Mm -hmm. And there's pros and cons to all of them. And my kids eventually were saying, Mum, you just need to make a decision and spend the money. <laughs> before, well, yes, that too, before dad changes his mind. <laughs> and you got it now and you're using it. So obviously yes. like there probably wasn't like a wrong answer. There's just like one that's no. possibly better, right? For the way and, that you want to work. And it's a bit like buying a car. Everyone's requirements are slightly different. Yeah. So the, the cricket maker versus the um, silhouette four or whatever versus the scan and cut DX versus a lower. Mm -hmm version of any of the above. It, it depends what your requirements are. So that, that was me, that was my project, even though I haven't been quite as creative as I would have liked to have been over the, um, over the summer. But we're getting better now. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing because this was really cool because <laughs> I've had that scanning cut kind of on my wish list and I'm like, no, I don't want to have an electronic cutter. And then no, well, me, oh, that is pretty good. Uh, so I've kind of hemmed and hawed back and forth. So seeing this from you is very helpful. So I will spotlight me back up. So that's pretty fun. Oh, so Kathy McKenzie is Clan McKenzie over here. We're all connecting with our Scottish roots and Mackenzie McGee. My full name is Mackenzie McGee. So it's as Scottish as it comes. <laughs> And Heather says, um, mine will be coming out a bit I think I must have missed it. And Laura says, I love your pages. So yeah, lots of, uh, lots of good stuff. Does anybody else, would anybody else like to share like something that you've created today? Brielle? Okay. Um, let's see. Can I spotlight your video? There we go. Good Hi, to go. Everybody. It's fun to be here. Um, crazy times. But anyway, I actually did a page. And this page is from uh, my husband and I went to Mexico in February. And little did we know that was, that was going to be it. Right? Like, who knows when we're going anywhere again. So it was just, I just got the pictures in that box that I was showing you all. And um, I don't know, these are the ones that spoke to me of just, I don't know, the whole looking back on joy and things we've done. And there's lots of fun things I've done since February, but nowhere that I've gone. So mm -hmm. it was really fun to sit down and do them. Thank awesome. You. That is a beautiful page. <laughs> lots of love. <laughs> lots of love. Okay. If anybody else wants to share, please let me know. You can either type in the chat, Jacqueline. Okay. Let's bring you up. Okay, so I've been following um, someone on YouTube called Cal Call Me Crafty Al, and she does what she calls a sheet load of cards. Hi. Hi. It's basically a No, no. I oh, I've got somebody's audio on in the background. I'm actually not sure uh, who it is right now. They're on the phone. Um, oh, you're right. Right. It's up near the top. Well, I go up and down the stairs because... Oh, hold on uh, a second. Um found the chocolate donut in the freezer uh -huh. oh dear <laughs> so i took it out of the i'm going through the list it's and diane i think diane uh the other another diane it's the the like right at the top always the people who are talking are at the top of the participant list um oh there we go thank you thank you <laughs> There we go. Jacqueline, you're on. <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, they're a, kind of a simple pattern where you can use one whole sheet of paper, like three whole sheets of paper, and just cut them up into a bunch of cards. So this was um, using like six by six. So I did like 12 cards while we've been talking. Um, and they're all just slight variations on the same pattern. 
um, using the Tula and Norbert Christmas six by six. Oh my gosh, I saw those and I'm like, oh, those little gnomes are so cute. <laughs> yeah. So it was, they're super fast to make, so. That's really cool. And so what was that YouTuber called again? Call Me Crafty Al. Call Me Crafty Al. Jacqueline, <laughs> this is Autumn and I did some too. You want to see mine? Yes, yes, I do. Let's bring you up as a spotlight. Here's the first, hi there. Here's the oh. first one. There's, I think there's two horizontal and two vertical. Oh. Same, same YouTuber. Same YouTuber. I already, I already mailed two of them. So it was six cards with um, three pieces of six by six paper plus card bases. Well, I will uh, have to be checking out this YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, Brielle's like, this is right up my alley. I will look this up for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's on, she gives you a P PDF with the measurements and everything every month. So cool. you get the instructions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Autumn and, and Jacqueline, for showing us because uh, that's kind of the thing that makes it a lot easier for all of us, right? Like when we're like sitting down, like card making, it's like, that's a production. <laughs> Sometimes you're just making one special one, but yeah. Can someone's asking if, if you can possibly put a link in the chat, if, if that's a possibility, so. I can try. Cool. I'm looking, I'm looking for it, for it right now. I think I have it. <laughs> Perfect. That's very helpful. Yeah, super fun. Any other people wanting to share scrappy things that you've been working on? My page is like semi stuck down, but not fully stuck down. <laughs> Laura says such beautiful cards, ladies. So I've started sticking things down. I haven't stuck my pictures down, but it's coming and I've been talking lots. So, you know, surprise, surprise <laughs> that, that happens. But, um, you know, we get there eventually. I think I'm actually much better when I have like a premium kit because I actually get my embellishments and everything done then too, don't I? <laughs> I've noticed um, productivity is a lot different when, I, when I'm building my own kits. So another bonus to having kits. Uh, thank you, Autumn. She found the YouTuber. So that link is being shared there. You should be able to click the link and go to the video. So I'm going to open that up and I'll see if I can't share that when I do the replay of this video on YouTube as well, so that people have access to that there too, since they'll be all curious. And Joyce says, my friends are trying to make me into a card maker. <laughs> I know. Um, so I have like feelings about that, right? Like I have stuff. So I can make cards and I do make Christmas cards and I make some birthday cards, but cards for me are definitely not my first love. My first love by far is actually making scrapbook pages. I like making like cards where I test um, techniques and new toys and different tools. I like to test things on cards but that's just not my preferred thing to be creating as a card. And I don't know. Um, I think that it's kind of, um, it's tough because it's crafty and I can make stuff and I can play, but it feels like if I'm having only so much time to create, I would much rather be putting my time into creating a page that's going to go into my album. That's, that's generally what I feel. So if you get a card for me, feel honored because I felt that that was really important to make and create for you. <laughs> that's, what I, like, that's what I need to tell my family. You know, I actually, <laughs> and they all know because <laughs> it's like, oh, a buy a card? No, I won't go buy a card. I'll have to just make it. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's just funny. I actually love making, um, I love it when people know that that was made for you. So I love that part of it. So it's not like I, 
hate cards or anything, but I, uh, you know, that time that that person invested in that, like to me, that's the valuable part in cards. Like when I get a card from somebody, I'm always like so honored because I know like you have made that, like that took time and that's time that you could be doing something else, but you're thinking about me while you're making that. So I really appreciate that. Um, the great thing about the sheet load is that you, um, you, you're doing six or eight cards in it's like 30 minutes. So to me, it's like less time than going to halt, going to the store and looking for them. So, you know, I just print the inside on my computer and then, then do the sheet load on the outside and they go pretty fast. You can buy, you know, a couple of cinnamon stamps and you're done in, you know, eight cards in 30 minutes. It's really amazing. That's so For me, amazing. it's not the crafty part. It's the, I got a bunch of sympathy cards now. I don't have to go get one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Riel says she likes to batch make them and then try to mail them all out. And Mickey says the reality of card making is that I would make them, but I'd never send them because I'm the worst at mailing anything. And then she says, if you get a card for me, I've been kidnapped and that's my evil twin. <laughs> Uh, Dorothy says, I like both card making and scrapbooking, but the scrapbooking has been stalled with not having a photo printer anymore. I have an ongoing project that I want to get photos printed so I can do some scrapbook pages, but sadly haven't gotten access to the photos. So frustrating. I feel that pain, Dorothy. I, um, I was so frustrated by my previous printer because it was such a pig on ink, right? Like every time I had to put ink in, it was like $80. I'm like, this is ridiculous. The printer wasn't expensive. It was like maybe 120 bucks, but then 80 bucks, 80 bucks, 80 bucks. Like I know I had spent at least $800 on that printer by the end, right? With all of the ink that I'd bought. So I kind of did a little bit of research online and I heard about these eco tank printers from Epson the Epson eco tanks. So they actually have like a big tank and you pour like a big bottle of liquid into the four colors. Now, are they a photo printer? Technically they're more like a multi-use office printer, but they can print photos. And it took me a while to get my settings set perfect. I probably wasted like 20 sheets of photo paper, but honestly it was worth the sacrifice because now this is so like printing them off is great. And the quality of the pictures is great. And like, I take most of my pictures with a phone, like the, they're only like their phone quality pictures, but that prints so super nice. And I've just finally replaced my ink. I've had my printer almost two years and I print everything like I don't know if you've seen the projects I do at Christmas time, like my non Christmas book. Like I take my Christmas cards and then I print all pictures from like the whole, anything Christmassy related goes into there. And, you know, I'm printing tons of pictures for that and I'm printing tons of pictures for other pages. And then I do load challenges and all of those things. Yeah. And just replaced ink and the inks are cheap. They're like 12 bucks a piece four colors like it was like nothing <laughs> like it was like nothing <laughs> compared to my old one and yeah it's it's been really reliable but the printer cost $320 right like that was the trade off $320 though the printer was more expensive but the ink has been so cheap it's practically free like now my cost of my paper is the high part not the ink right um so that's yeah just look at options when you're looking like, because sometimes that cheapest printer that you can get is not the best deal. Uh, Diane says, one of my big regrets in life was the hurt I caused my brother's ex-wife when I threw out a card, she had cross stitch for me, but I didn't know that she had done it herself. Yeah, that's <laughs> heartbreaking, but you know, it wasn't like with ill intent. <laughs> um, Joyce said, I had a good time making cards last month with, the gaps, but they're still sitting on my desk. Yeah. And Dorothy says, yeah, my photo printer's ink was expensive. 
<laughs> Braille's like, buy some stamps and mail those cards. <laughs> yeah. I actually try to always go when I actually go to the post office now, it's like, I buy some U.S. stamps too, because I get like the Canadian ones on the roll, but I'm always running out of my U.S. ones. Um, and when else is, I love making cards. I make about 95 birthday and anniversary cards every year for family and close friends and about 120 Christmas cards every year. And I mail them all. Yay. See, that should be my like little, <laughs> my little, <laughs> my little gift emoji. <laughs> uh, the name of the printer, it, this one I have is a, it's an Epson eco tank. So it's ET dash 2750 is the one that I have. And like I said, it cost me more. And in the beginning, the pictures that it printed looked terrible. I had to play with the settings a bit um, from the computer side, from the printer kind of software. But once that got set, it was, it's been fantastic. So, um, and it does wireless too, and actually reliable. My last one, it was wireless when my son set it up and then next week it wasn't wireless anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Laura says, my friend just told me that her father buys a new printer whenever he runs out of ink. They actually make them like, that's the cost, right? Like they make them with that. And that your initial ink setup is the cost of ink, which is horrible. Like we don't want to live in this throwaway society where we throw things away, but like they make that whole printer thing so designed around that like how many times have you had a cartridge tell you that it's out of ink and it won't print another print even though you know it could probably squeak a little bit more out of it but the little microchip in that cartridge tells it that it doesn't have any more like that kind of stuff like how is that not even illegal right like how can they get away with doing that and i get it like they don't want to print bad pictures because then you're going to be like oh this picture's terrible but you know, if it's not technically out of ink that, yeah, Stacey's like, that makes me crazy. <laughs> Sorry, this wasn't meant to be like the whole printer rant, but yeah, if once you find a printer that works for you, that's reliable, that actually talks to your computer the way it's supposed to, it's like, thank goodness. Uh, yeah, and Kathy's like, don't get me started on the printer rant. Yeah, this one, it's, is it the best printer? ever? I don't know. Probably not. But it has definitely saved me a ton of cash on the whole ink refill thing. So that's why I love it. Mickey says, I have my Canon Pixma and I love it. And it's wide format and awesome. Yeah, this one was the Epson EcoTank ET2750. And like I said, it costs more up front, but man, has it saved me money since then. Because in the two years, like I just replaced ink for the first time and they're so easy. Like you don't have to slide cartridges. Like usually they're pretty easy, but you take the little thing, you put it on the top, it glug, glug, glugs until it's full. And then you take it off. None of it leaked. None of it spilled. It was like totally awesome. I, I actually did it when my son was here because I was like worried. I'm like, oh God, I have to figure out this technology stuff. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, look, mom, so hard. Clug, clug, clug. <laughs> look, oh, okay. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. Sometimes technology is hard. I taught you to use a spoon. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's the thing. I always bug him about that. I taught you to use a spoon. You're giving me a hard time about using computers. <laughs> uh, Diane said, I just put that info straight into my crafty journal, ready for future shopping. Yeah, and like, yeah, the setup in the thing. Once it was set up though, it's brilliant. Um, I do have a video somewhere. I don't think I ever posted it, but I did make a video of when I set it up. I should find that. The printer setup video. I'll put that on my list. It won't happen this week, <laughs> but I can put it on my list for in September and we can revisit that because I know like the whole unpacking out of the box. I'm like, new printer. I wonder if this thing's any good. It's been great. The Pixma takes the small cartridges and, that are small tanks. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, tank stuff is seems to be the way to go. Anyways, um, it is that time where we kind of wrap things up. Uh, I will say hi to Amy, who I haven't seen for ages. So I was so happy to see you. <laughs> and, uh, 
Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for being here, for being part of this today. I really enjoy spending time together. If you're catching this on the replay, thank you so much for scrapbooking along with us. Uh, my page is semi in the works, but it's coming along. It might not happen and be finished today, but I will get it finished and I will share it on my Instagram. That's at Alice Bowl on Instagram, B-O-L-L. -L. And I just look forward to seeing what you create. So if you are making something and you do share it on Instagram, you can hashtag scrap happy family. That's a good way to see me or just at me at Alice Bowl. And I'll definitely see those too. So those are two places that I keep track of stuff. Christina says, thanks, Alice. This was a lot of fun. And if you're not signed up for that Scrap Smarter experience, registration will end Thursday night. So that will be your last chance. You can still save $20 right now. Um, I'll confess there will be a little replay period after the event where you can get it all, but it'll be full price for the whole thing. And then that will go away. So this is kind of like the last chance to get in on that. If you're a Scrap Heavy member, you have a special rate. So make sure you take advantage of that. It's a really good rate. So if you don't know, send me a message, support at scraphappy.org. If you are looking for some fabulous scrapbooking supplies and you want to get your hands on one of those flavors of the month kits from the scrap room, you can go to scrap dash room.com and hook yourselves up with one of those kits because they're actually still available. That's why I want to host these um, earlier in the month so that they, you can still get your hands on one of the kit if you see it and you're like, Oh, that looks really awesome. So <laughs> Stacy's like, yay, scrap room. I know. Um, I was sad that I didn't have my kit, but I just didn't want to wait. I wanted to hang out with everybody in scrap. I will get my kit and I will share more info about that. So um, so, but after this, we should be rolling and we'll have them on time. I'm sure that our mail service is going to get its act together. Um, that's international shipping. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me for this. If you haven't heard the podcast, you can go check that out. It's on Apple Podcasts and it's getting listed on all these other places now. So that's kind of cool to see it's working. Um, it's just called Scrap Happier. And yeah, the first three episodes are out. Next one will be out next Tuesday. You can also check out the Scrap um, Happy blog at scraphappy.org. So there's all kinds of fun things. If you're like, I need more scrapbooking. And if you're like, hey, this membership that you're talking about, that's also at scraphappy.org. It's right near the top. It's like the happiest scrapbookers online because, you know, that's, that's our goal. <laughs> so <laughs> have some fun. Check us out for that. Um, and if, um, yeah, and then since you're here, you're probably already on the list to join us for our next one. So uh, we will be doing Scrapbook Live again next month. And in September, we will also be hosting our monthly um, Scrap Smarter session. So the Scrap Smarter experience is this whole weekend experience, but once a month we actually host a little free Scrap Smarter session as well. So if you're on the email list for this, then you're on the email list to get that as well. And you'll be invited to those free events because you know that's a fun way to kind of get involved and learn some new scrappy skills. That's the goal. So if you're not signed up for that, that is at scraphappy.org slash subscribe and that will get you on the list. Vicki says, thank you, Alice. You're so welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for everybody that showed us cool stuff for show and tell, for sharing your layouts with us. I really love to see what you're creating while we're hanging out here together. That's really fun for me. And I know it's inspiring to see and like we learn cool things all the time, like just seeing some of the stuff, like the ideas for making little journals that track color palettes and the ideas for um, YouTubers that help us make like a ton of cards <laughs> out of a couple sheets of paper. That's awesome. So really fun stuff. Okay. Thanks. So thanks for joining me. I will talk to you all soon and happy scrapping everyone. Happy scrapping. Bye.